And so this is a Saturday afternoon, actually, Pat. Saturday afternoon. Yeah. We're, we're, we're there, behind. It's... What what is happening? Yeah. Are we? Is this the, our creaking joints no longer supporting us and being time? Uh, or... Yeah. Uh, it was what was that line? As you get older, your body betrays yourself, and your these days it's hospital appointments and going uh -huh. places and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, but as well as that, uh, yesterday even my vehicles. Uh, the motor vehicles were betraying me, so it's just one of them days, dude. Aye, and then besides that, it was raining. When it rains, yeah. of course. Okay. Anyway, Pat, I hope let's hope things will get brighter and better, both in terms of the climate yeah. and in terms of uh your your life in general. Okay, you the thing you drew my attention to, Pat, as a kickoff point is um uh, the Americans and how they voted at the UN yesterday. I think it was. Yeah, Jude, I sat and watched that for a while last night. And, like, I would love to know uh, about 10 different uh, levels what under, and under God's going on between the Americans and the Israelis because the Americans are expending a hell of a lot of their diplomatic can, uh, uh, collateral on uh, on Israel, and, and it's not uh, working for them. Jude, the Americans looked very isolated last night in that Security Council. Uh, what was it, 15 votes? 13 for for the uh, UAE amendment, one abstention, which was disgusting of the UK and the Americans. You know, Jude, it's, it's, I don't know where I'm really going with this, Jude. The American moral high ground, if it ever really exists, know that they were democratic and they voted and, that the, and so on. And they were democracies and they voted for the right things and so on. Last night, I was disgusted by the Americans, and I mean disgusted to mm -hmm. any that uh, 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 there's it seems you know, even Russia and China are coming across as being more uh humane and mm -hmm. more dignified than the Americans. And the Americans are basically saying, Our ally can do whatever it, it likes. Dude, every other country in the world, and I'm repeating, I know I've said this before, was doing what Israel was doing, it would be it would be roundly condemned by every right thinking person. They're, the Americans are trying to tell us that what we see before us is that the oppressor is the good guy and the oppressed is the, is the evil one. And yeah. nobody's buying that. Yeah, it's pretty astonishing, actually, given the fact that the world and anybody just looking at their TV every night wouldn't be disgusted about what's happening. And we're now up to 20,000 people dead. 70% of those women and children. Uh, I mean, yeah. the mind boggles. I, the thing is, why is the US doing this? I suppose... Maybe you could argue that um, Joe Biden sort of burnt his boats because at the beginning he said, Israel, we have your back and we will stay yeah. the course with you or whatever. Uh, and, having, and Sunak said something to the same extent. So that once having committed themselves to then back off from that and say, uh, well, we don't actually have your back because of what they did, they would see that as being weak. I, I myself would think it is an example of being human. But they, yeah. they seem to think, I I believe, that uh, it would be a any weakness. The other thing is, of course, Israel really, or uh, Jewish people, as I understand it, really do pour money into um, some of the American political parties. And I'd say the Democratic Party gets a fair slice as well. Mm -hmm. um, you, they pay it back by the billions that they spend in terms of armaments and so on that they pass on to Israel. It's a... Um, it's a it's a sort of a pathetic uh, situation, as you say. Uh, Rishi Sunak saying, "Oh yeah, well we'll abstain," you know, uh, as if that was going to somehow uh, raise their moral tone. Some sort of moral uh, yeah. credence. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Joe Biden has sort of let me down. I feel sort of disappointed in him. I feel about him the yeah. same way, a, a bit like the way I feel about Starmer. I'd really like to see the Tories out, but then I think, oh God, Starmer will then be in. And uh, with Joe Biden, I really feel let down by Biden. But then if you don't support yeah. Biden, like, you know, you've got uh, uh, Trump. Jim, uh, I wonder a lot of those people who, when Joe appeared in Mayo, I wonder how many of them would show up today. Yeah. Well, well, I think people are, it's amazing how uh, forgiving the Irish people are. Uh, I saw they celebrate. Uh, I, I, wonder, I wonder about that, Jim. I you noticed think? there's a real hardening of attitudes. You know, uh, Jude, you, when you look, look at it, you know, and you see, uh, there was an American, or uh, sorry, there was an Israeli general, on a retired general. He said, the war would now be impossible. The Americans have lost, or not the Americans, the Israelis have used up all their armaments, uh, you know, their heavy duty stuff on uh, Gaza. 
They're mm. getting supplied nearly on a daily basis now by the Americans to mm. bomb. Dude, they, they have dropped more bombs in uh, uh, Gaza and a tightly confined space in, uh, what was it, in a month than was used in a year in Vietnam. Oh. Unbelievable. Dear, dear. I, I, they really do seem shameless. I wonder, how do you think people will forgive and forget when this is all over? No, dude, I, I, well, I don't know. I, for the rest of my days, like I, I have, by the way, I have long held the blue. Uh, right, dude, here's a quick thing. 2006, I retired from my job. I was 52. I had about a month when I had nothing to do. And I sat and watched. Uh, the Israelis were involved in the war in Lebanon. And I've been up, up and not basically a supporter of Israel. Poor little Israel, you know, surrounded by all yeah. these enemies yeah. and all the rest of them. What's the general? I said, Jesus, wait a minute. I've been conned here. The Israelis are not the good guys. They were taking over land. They were attacking people around them. But even, Jude, one thing that's always forgotten, this 1967, you know, about when Israel attacked the other countries, they didn't attack Israel. Now, they might have been thinking about attacking Israel, but Israel launched a preemptive strike. I mm -hmm. sort of forgot, you know, that Israel has been nearly responsible for nearly every war, the Six Day War, mm -hmm. attacked all around it. You know, and that, that sort of, you know, whether the other countries were going to attack it or not is an irrelevance. So let's get on the record. Israel attacked them first. But anyway, yeah. along well, the way, I, Jude, I realized Israel has been. Uh, uh, it's been detaining Palestinians under this, uh, what they call administrative detention. There's something like 5,200 Palestinians in jail, a lot of them on no conviction or no charges. Children are getting up to 10 years in jail for throwing stones. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the illegal settlements are on a massive growth. Netanyahu is on the record as saying there will be no two-state solution during his, uh, his, during on his watch. And I could keep going. And you're sort of saying... And yet the Americans are trying to tell us that the Hamas and the Palestinians are the bad guys. But are they not, as Americans, not rode back a bit? Uh, as I understood it, they no, had the, yeah, his moderating they're, his they're, language they're and saying they'll have to, you know, they've got to be more careful. I, I they... do, oh, I, you'll have to stop killing less innocent civilians. Is it moderating your language? <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Ah, oh, it's an appalling situation. Uh, it does look like, to be honest, it looks like, if not genocide, then pushing the Palestinians out of uh, Gaza and maybe even out of uh, the the other area that they're in. Um, can I ask you a question? I want to ask you. Well, see, see when this is all over. Yeah. How does America and and Britain to a lesser extent? Well, Britain to maybe a lot lesser extent. But how do the Americans claim any kind of moral uh, high ground? How can they claim that they're spreading democracy? How can they claim any diplomatic influence in the world? Ah, but yeah, I just, I think America lost its uh, moral high ground a long, long time ago. I mean, it's hard for a country that has used the atom bomb on two Japanese cities to get after Israel for killing civilians in the course of their war. Mm. Uh, so yeah. there's, there's all sorts of things that uh, the moral high ground is denied. Vietnam, for example, look at the look at the death yeah. and suffering of over a million. Vietnamese, and they would torch uh, uh, villages. And there was rape went on, all sorts of the most horrible stuff. So yeah. uh, I don't think, uh, there was somebody I think on TV during the week and they said the one piece of advice they would give to America is stop invading countries because there's a yeah. connection between your invading countries and this immigration problem that they're now faced with. Um, yeah. I I I I'm almost tired talking about this, Pat, in the sense that yeah, I'm being so disgusted and I feel sort of helpless at the same time. It's hard yeah. to know what you can do. Virtually nothing. I think yeah. if if Israel hasn't got the message and the states that the world is opposed to and disgusted by what's going and on. The world's an appalling world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to what sounds like a relatively harmless topic, and that's Brexit. Uh, there's an article yeah. you've drawn my attention to in The Guardian, I think, where it's saying that Brexit is harming Britain. Well, that's hardly news, is it, Pat? I mean, we, we no, sort of no, there's, uh, but uh, several Tory party guys have said Brexit, we're recovering much quicker than uh, other countries and we're doing their... The Guardian is saying uh, that, that's the wrong sort of thing. Brexit is actually is, um, harming Britain in a way uh, that it's the fact that where it should be, it is not. I wrote it down, Joe. Uh, uh, 
uh, Brexit, uh, it's predicted that uh, the economy will shrink by 4% or productivity in the economy, sorry, will, to be more accurate, will shrink by 4%. And, and imports and exports are down by 15%. Uh, and the other thing, Jude, by the way, it's also the, the, this guy who, the, and I'm not even bugging him, the Guardian was re re replying to some economists or other, and they also made the point that Britain has not suffered from the far right in the same way as Holland and uh, yeah. uh, uh, Hungary and all the rest of them. Singing, I be kidding. The Tory party are now the party of the far right. They have adopted the language, the policies, and the norms of society. See, sing about Rwanda and stuff like that. Dude. And uh, that isn't a far right policy. You gotta yeah. be kidding. Yeah. Okay. Can we come back to Rwanda in a second? I, I I think it's a good idea to judge the state of an economy by the experience of people. Now, the experience of people and their pay. Uh, there's a uh, there's a letter, a short letter actually in the Irish Times, I think, today or yesterday. And the guy is talking about how attractive it would be for the North to uh, join with the South and the New Ireland. He says that in, fifth, this is the guy who wrote the letter, 15 years of relative decline across the UK with its productivity growth at half the rate seen in other advanced, uh, advanced economies has cost the, av cost the average worker there £10,700 a year in lost pay growth. Now, I know that. My daughter, my daughter's a junior doctor in Britain, and she says that she's getting the same pay now that she, in fact, she's gone backwards, she insists, from what she would have been getting about 10 to 15 years ago. That's the level at which things have uh, got to in Britain. And I think that's the way we should think of it. Rather than the big headline figures, how are people being paid and how are they managing? You know, what number of food yeah. banks? Those are the things that really impact on people's lives. I saw um, some research that indicated that most people in Britain, both those who voted Brexit and those who didn't, now believe that they're suffering as a result of Brexit. Uh, it yeah. seems to be only a question of how uh, soon they'll creep back towards Europe. Of course, a major stumbling block is our firm, our friend Keir Starmer, who's terrified yeah. that he might be seen as a remainer or a you know a yeah. remoner, and that that, that might mm. affect his vote. Uh, but certainly, there's no doubt about it. Uh, things really have got very, very bad in Britain since. I, I, I'm sort of worried. I've got three children there with families, you know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I can see signs with at least one of them that it's having an effect on their lives. Um, Absolutely. I, 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 do you think they'll ever go back, Pat? Or am I being optimistic that they might eventually come? I think you're being optimistic. It'll, it'll be a, probably a generation because mm. to, to quote yourself, uh, Starmer, uh, right, unless something catastrophic happens, Starmer is almost a, a certain shoe in as the next uh, Prime Minister. Uh, you know, right? He has absolutely you know it's, it's like you know like getting pronged but with an, an electrical stick he, every <laughs> time somebody makes you know um, mentions brexit he moves back so he ain't going to do anything and as well as that it, it, the other side of story i suppose there is a real thing and what, what was it 52 48 even if they had another vote tomorrow and it was the other way around it would still be divisive so I don't think any politician of real uh, substance is going to touch that until there's a clear majority who say they want to go back, want to go back in. But if things keep going the way they are, and people are suffering, so in real terms, their wages are the same as they would have been 15 years ago, or maybe less. Well, surely yeah. if that that decline continues, people will get desperate. You know, the, this notion of what stance did Starmer take, or what stance did Rishi Sunak take? That will be beside the point with them, surely. They'll be saying, I we can't have this anymore. I do, but you know, know some of that? So we anecdotal stuff that I always think is more important. You know it's mm. what the people on the ground are saying. It was mm. like the wee woman I met in Spain. I was sitting in a pub on a wild, warm summer's day, and I sat one down and had myself a pint of cold beer. And I got this talk to this wee English woman, and she was about 75, whatever she was, and she was absolutely disgusted. She, they, she has been living out in Spain, and she told me, because of Brexit, she now is allowed only to stay for 90 days, and then she has to go out for 90 days. And, she, and the exact quote she, she said, they, they didn't tell us that, did they? 
you no, know. So, no, no. you know, and by the way, the other thing, June, as well, the morning we went out as well, me, myself and my eldest son, we went to Spain and I didn't realise because we flew to Belfast that I would be on the, the, the sort of Brexit area. And we sat for about 45, 50 minutes and, and boiling hot sun, you know, to get through customs or the security checks, sorry, while the people with Irish passports went on through, you know, went on, who came from Dublin down through. All those little things, dude, are going to annoy the hell out of yeah. the average Brit. Yeah, it's funny because when I was in Spain, well, back before uh, Brexit, uh, I remember being struck by the number of retired couples that were very happily yeah. living in this part of southern Spain. Uh, so a lot of people had a, got their got their whole lives turned around because of this. Anyway, again, it's so self evident that Brexit was just balls up basically. Okay, uh, there, there's a yeah. there's an interesting article. I don't know if you saw it. It was by David McWilliams, and I think it was just went into the Irish Times today. And it really, I find it fascinating. Oh, I think uh, David McWilliams is a very astute guy. And he's a very, yeah, he, he writes exactly. very well as also. And he says that the, well, he talks about our country. He really means, he's confused. He really means our state. Um, that, <laughs> that, that. Do you see, you get the, that in every way. The state, oh, yeah, I'm just trying to bring enlightenment to people. Uh, that the state <laughs> has got wealth and uh, ability uh, to direct things and to increase productivity and to provide infrastructure and to enhance the health service and so on. But that the state isn't doing that. It says they're, they're going with this thing of, let's keep this amount of money for a rainy day. And he feels that's the absolute opposite of what they should be doing. He says, by keeping holding on to billions of euros and saying for a rainy day that is just in case that as a result uh, immigrants are seen as uh, the cause of deprivation in people's lives they're the reason yeah. that there isn't a better education system they're the reason that there aren't better hospitals they're the reason for all housing and so on um, and he argues that a country can't expand its population and refuse to build more public infrastructure in case some future public finance problem arises. So it's saying, it's yeah. saying, painting, as Shakespeare said, a painted devil that might occur yeah. and will hold on to the money. It's sort of like a, it's a wee bit like a, I suppose that we country people did that sometimes. You'd hold on to money. Yeah, yeah. You'd find that a lot of money yeah, the whole time and they were starving themselves. Yeah. Judy, you know, it's, it's like somebody, you know, like a, a big industrial said, not filling a pothole road, uh, look, we'll keep it for future investment. And then mm. people won't come down the road because of the, the, the potholes. You know, like it's a pure analogy, but you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, have we, have we built the hospitals? Have we built the schools? Maybe we would create wealth, you know, generate more wealth, you know, that we wouldn't need to save for any day. You know, well, that, that, okay, yeah. there's a certain amount of, the amount of you know, uh, people should be sensible. But, you know, dude, have we created the colleges that turned out the graduates, graduates that inve and attracted investment? Surely that is the way to go. If you stop to think about it for a minute, Pat, one of the things I was brought yeah. up with, uh, and which Maggie Thatcher reasserted, was that you shouldn't spend beyond your means. That is to say, you yeah. shouldn't get into debt. But I, yeah. I, for my, I'd say most of my life I was in debt. I had a mortgage. That's what mortgages are. Yeah. They're and you bought a car. You, take out. you buy yeah. a car and you pay it off by the month. Uh, in all yeah. sorts of ways. If we if we only spent the money we had to spend at the time, yeah. you know, you'd have nothing. Well, uh, fair yeah. enough, you wouldn't have debt. But I mean, debt can be a creative thing. But, as Richard, well. here, it's, it's, you, you know, it's just come out of my head as you just do you not invest in a car. You wouldn't have a job. <laughs> exactly. You get to work. Exactly. Well, yeah. you wouldn't have a job that you couldn't walk to. <laughs> no. And, you, and, and you, if you're dependent on public transport, it probably wouldn't work. Yeah, you know. And you'd probably have to live in a garden shed because you wouldn't be able to afford it. Yeah, any... down, down the back, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it really is ridiculous. I think that's a very timely and interesting uh, contribution to this whole thing about the state of uh, the infrastructure and health and so on in the South because we're agreed that it's not good. And yet we keep on hearing these figures that are really, really encouraging that there's so many billions yeah. more coming in in tax than was expected. Uh, I have a feeling yeah. that people, uh, because of the 2008 crash, that that has left a mark 
and maybe people yeah. like Leo Varadkar and so on are determined never again. And a way it's a kind of yeah. a financial, local financial parallel with what's happening in Israel and Gaza. The, the Jews yeah. were so persecuted and the terrible things that happened to the Nazis. So they're absolutely determined they're going to be top dog from now on. It's a sort of a hangover yeah. from history, uh, only in absolutely. financial terms here. Um, yep. I, 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 um, I, I, there was also another, I, I don't know if we should be pursuing this, but there was another article in the Irish Times today where they talked about Jared Howland and he talked about uh, this new, mat he called it matrix, this new matrix of concern, of public concern, that won't be good for Sinn Féin. He's saying that things have moved from concern with social things like housing and, and health and so on to the question of law and order as a result yeah. of that knifing and those riots. And he believes yeah. that won't do any favours for Sinn Féin. They'll have a hard time of it. And that they made a mistake, he says, they made a mistake in politicising the office of the Garda Commissioner. Would you would you go with that? Um, I just, not, not for the reason that maybe Howland, but uh, have you, you know the way you read the room, no matter what anybody says, See, after the uh, riots in Dublin and Mary Lou come down and said she had uh, come out and said she had no faith in the Garda Commissioner or the uh, somewhere in the back of my head, I said to myself, that's not going to play well in, uh, with the, the grid unwashed out there because uh, there's this thing in Ireland. They will they will not blame the Garda for what happened. They will blame the Raiders for what happened and they will see uh, and they will see it as opportunistic. Now, Mary Lou could argue, wait a minute, what I said. Uh, uh, it was totally legitimate that she could point to the fact that many Gardaí and people like the Irish and the Pen have said their parts of Dublin are basically no-go areas, hmm. that they're, the number of Gardaí have de decreased uh, in key areas in Dublin, that it's not safe, that there's a major drug problem, there's get feral gangs running loose and all the rest of it. But it was the wrong time and the wrong place to say it if, uh, 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 in terms of public support. Not that she was wrong in saying it, because I think she she could stand up tomorrow morning and say everything I have said it's it's there. It can be backed up, can be supported by factual you know realities. But Jude, it came across as if oh here's a good opportunity to bash the the you know the Gardaí, and we're the opposition, and the Gardaí, the uh, establishment will back the Gardaí and the back the minister. But we're you know I think it was uh, put it against. I thought at the time that won't play well. Uh -huh. it, it seems not to have, and you could link that with their drop in their two or three percentage points in terms of their popularity. However, I thought that uh, she, Mary Lou is very clear on the distinction between her criticism of the Garda Commissioner and the rank and file Garda that uh, were trying to deal with things on the ground. I, I mean, I, I, people would really need to get their heads cleared in these things and not go with some sort of headline thing. The fact, as I understand it, is that there were guys called, uh, Gardy called in from all over the South to help. And when they came, yeah. they found the equipment wasn't there and they were pulling on yeah. all sorts of stuff. And there was nobody coordinating things. I mean, that's no. ridiculous. That really is ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, I heard the Minister for Justice say, oh, yeah, well, things were under control by uh, 10 o'clock. Yeah, but there was a period yeah. from about 7 to 10. Right, for about three hours, it was him. Yeah. Uh, so I, 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 I'm, I'm a bit disappointed, really, in the inability of the public to distinguish between criticism of those who are uh, have that portfolio for justice, uh, the criticism of the person who's leading the law forces of law and order, and you know bashing the cops. There, there is a difference. But Judy, uh, can can I revert to our previous conversation? Remember Jeremy Corbyn's famous one about Brexit. He tried to be just like what you're after doing to actually enunciate a sort of a very sensible. What he said, I don't, uh, uh, we shouldn't go for Brexit. Brexit, sorry. But what we should do is reform the uh, uh, the EU. We should get things working properly, that there are certain things and and uh, and and, uh, and the according to the EU that need, definitely need change. Hmm. He tried to sell that. And Boris Johnson came out, let's get Brexit done. Uh, I have an oven ready deal, which is easier to sell. Mm, yeah, good point, Pat. Good point. Uh, there's no point in, I suppose, well, there is a point, actually, because you do need to seek the truth if you can. 
uh, and trying to nuance the thing and show that it's a complicated thing or that, you know, there is a distinction between attacking the cops and attacking the leader, the, between attacking the whole system of justice and attacking the uh, Minister for Justice. Do, do, I, do you I, seriously think that we, we Mrs. Doherty, Dunn and Dunny bit or uh, uh, Tala, this, uh, takes the time to listen to, you know, all she hears is she's attacking the Guardian Commissioner. The, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the nuance point that she's standing up for the rank and file. Mm -hmm. I think that just gets lost. Yeah, in the, yeah, you're, sorry. Pro you're probably very likely right. I, I, I must say I'm really, uh, um, it just flies in the face of reason. It reminds me of an occasion when I was, I was on RTE, of all things. And uh, a guy yeah. called uh, Collins from Kerry or Limerick or somewhere. Uh, he would have been the son yeah. of Je Jer Jerry Collins, who was at UCD with me. Yeah. But he was a busy attacking Jerry Adams. Uh, yeah. And he kept finishing every attack by saying, this is nothing to do with politics. <laughs> and I said, yeah. uh, I said him, so you're a politician. You're attacking the leader of another political party. And it's nothing to it's do politics. with politics. Hey, but hold on. I know we're going to, this is totally going off script. But yeah. you just mentioned Jerry Adams. Yeah. Well, he showed up yesterday. I saw that. I was amazed at that, actually. Um, I wonder why that yeah. was. Um, I yeah. I mean, his contribution seems sincere enough, you know. Uh, but I, I was a bit, a bit surprised. But I also thought, I know, I know this is a very minority opinion. I thought it almost got a bit... Over the top. I felt as if it was better. Was, I, I, hold on, Dr. Collins. I was going to ask you because I, I was figured that was what you were going to say. <laughs> well, it's true because the, the priest holding up this and here's another thing. And then, you know, the church uh, at the same time is making pronouncements and saying, like, we shouldn't really be, you know, interfering with the ceremony. We should be getting on to the ceremony. Maybe one significant thing and not everything like a pint of Guinness or whatever things the guy was connected with. Uh, so in one way, I, I it warmed my heart to see these guys up there singing away and strumming away and even dancing. Yeah. Uh, but in another way, I felt, for God's sake, just put the guy uh, to to rest in peace. Speak, you know, in a reasonably adult way about what a man, a man he was, the joy he brought into people's lives with, with some of his songs. Like, uh, a note of thought, Pat. You know the way you watch yeah. movies nowadays? And if there is yeah. a black man, and this relates to another story that you pointed out, if there's a black car, a guy, a black actor in it, nine times out of ten, he will he or he or she will be the uh, person in authority. They'll be the judge or they'll be the boss yeah. or whatever. Um and I, I I just think that in the same way that is tokenism. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I just thought there was a there was an element of that uh, 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 attached to what we saw yesterday. Uh, a similar sort of uh, oh, I don't know. They never mentioned. Well, we say I'm trying to inch towards saying is they never mentioned the fact that uh, your man drank his life away, and that's the truth. Well, she ended up, yeah, she ended up. Right? right here. here. I'm, I'm, gonna read, I, I, I'm gonna read that. Well, yeah, he, he died did, his own uh, health. Uh, he really did. I mean, yeah, that, and uh, that's his yeah, choice. he smoked and he drank and he and he took drugs and he whatever. Mm. But you having said that, apparently on a personal level, he was a totally decent human oh, being. Yeah, from, yeah, by all accounts, the, yeah. yeah. But the only did just, some you know, I, was watch, I was watching last night. It was on BBC, and I was thinking to myself, "There's two ways of looking at this: that it was a disrespectful in the Catholic Church what went on, and or b it was a wonderful send off." And a typically wild Irish journal, you know. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I thought the other side of the story. Here, I had a friend, a Catholic priest, and uh, I, I remember there was a time when the, the lay people would come up and give the homily. Uh -huh. He stopped it. He says, because one day there was a funeral, and he says this guy came in with a pint of heart, put it on top of the coffin, and said, <laughs> "Joey liked a drink," you know. And he says, "Pat, like this is a funeral." There, he says, "There are people there who are distraught." And he says, this village idiot type thing, you know, type, he says, total disrespect. And he says, then they start playing these sort of songs, you know, like Patricia the Stripper or something, you know, uh, you know, uh, he says, it was totally inappropriate. So he said, I just stopped. And he says, some people like the fact, but he says, all the people come and say, uh, Father, I, I was wondering how long it would take you before you sort of said, look, wait a minute, this is a funeral, not a party. 
It's very difficult one, isn't it? Though uh, you know, because yeah. sometimes uh, the well, again, I would I I would take into account what were the feelings of the family about it. You know, the people who really cared for him. What were that was their views? Uh, I have to hold myself back because I have I I would have certain beliefs about how you should conduct a funeral or how a ceremony in a church should happen. Yeah. Uh, and to be well, honest, dude, with dude, you, I, 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 was, I, I, I had very mixed views on it because one part of me says that's that's a celebration of like myself and my dear Mrs. Dude, I'm going to get a, get up. We were going through Spain many many years ago, and there was a funeral on a Sunday, and there was a brass band playing unbelievably happy music, and apparently. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's Spain, you know, it's a celebration of life, not a sort of wedding. And there's two ways of looking at it. And you know, maybe in Ireland we'd have seen. I I was sort of not shocked, at it, but totally surprised at, at seeing a brass band playing this upbeat music at a funeral. And uh, there was a they were carrying the coffin behind. But anyway, bottom line is, dude, maybe we are very old traditional. Could be, could be. I well, I'd say definitely right in both of them. I don't know about the traditional, but definitely both of them. Really? Uh, yeah. uh, but maybe maybe uh, this thing will evolve and they'll have uh, 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 the idea of having these uh, knees up outside the church after the mass, yeah. which might make sense. You yeah. know? I just, uh, it, yeah. it looked, uh, as you say, on one hand, joyful, on the other hand, just uh, mm, a wee bit tasteless, yeah. really. Um, and again, as I say, I wonder how the, how the uh, family actually felt. Of course, the thing is, Family might be afraid to say anything, even they didn't like it particularly, because you know the the, the guys. If you said to some of the guys who were celebrating, they'd say, "What are you, are you trying to make me tell me what I what I can say about my friend uh, Shane McGowan?" Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, terrible. Okay, is there anything left we haven't talked about, Pat? Uh, no, you? Uh, no, no. You see, uh, yesterday was it the, this Rwanda policy oh, of geez. our our uh, soon I <laughs> should certainly wonder, uh, you know. Are, do these politicians take us for fools? The the president yes. or the prime minister of they're telling us it, that uh, they're going to overrule the human rights clause. They're going to rule, overrule the EU yeah. by sending people to Rwanda. By the way, apparently it's costing something like three hundred million now. Huh. The other thing as well, they're basically saying that this place is safe, even though everybody knows it's not safe. And they're going to they're going to over. But here's the thing: the president or the prime minister of Rwanda, I'm not sure which what office, got ninety eight percent at the last election. No, Jude, go and tell me the democracy is that even possible? Uh, well, I, 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 uh, uh, I tend to tend to be so much in agreement with you, Pat, that I'm almost lost for words. The, the the British government are passing a bill which is saying Rwanda is safe. So essentially, some commentators were saying they're they're saying, okay, if it's not safe, we're saying it's safe, and that's what matters. So yeah. they we're talking, they're saying. What they're saying essentially is that cats are dogs. Dogs yeah. are cats. And as long <laughs> as we say cats are dogs, you know, the the the, the judges who were I was at the Supreme Court, the uh, where that this thing was taken and where it was thrown out, they basically they said, look, the the factual content of the argument put forward by the British government is absolutely totally flawed. You know, in other words, like you're after saying. They're saying the British government, the reason they're sending people there is they've got guarantees that the place is safe. The, 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 the judges, uh, what, but a month ago, said, factually, that's not true. They, they're saying that, that, that there's torture, there are disappearances, yeah. there are kidnappings, and the, and the facilities, apparently, are far from uh, ideal. So you're sending somebody who comes into Britain onto Rwanda to a place that's not safe, but the Tory government are saying, right, we're going to change that and we're going to put it on and say that, that the Rwanda is safe and the judges have no case. But you stop to Believe think it. about it, Pat. Stop to think about it. That whole idea of deporting takes you back to yeah. 19th century, sending people to yeah. Van Diemen's land. But there is a contradiction yeah. at the heart of what the Brits are doing. They're saying, we're going to punish these um, people, we'll deter others from following suit as immigrants yeah. by sending them to Rwanda. Yeah. Uh, which would suggest that this is uh, not a nice place to be. And in the same breath, they're saying, Rwanda's totally safe. It's a really good country. You know? Yeah, it's a oh. land of milk and honey. <laughs> I did, that, very good point, Jude. I never even thought that, but you're 100%, right? Yeah. In other words, here's the deterrent we're sending you to, but, but they're telling them, but it's a great place. Like, no, <laughs> it's it's get, unbelievable. Get a free time there. Okay, I think we've yeah. kicked the guts out of most of it, Pat. 
Um, yeah. Are you looking forward to the weekend with the rain peeing uh, down on you? Uh, uh, or... Jude, I, I, I was asking you a question. Who was the poacher uh, talking about deep mud water? But it's dark, it's dreary, and it's damp uh, here. You know, it it's but really, it, but really... sit down as well, Pat. Have you, have you got a fire, an open fireplace? Yeah, we have. We've got a, a, a wood stove. Ah, good, good. Oh, stove, stove. So you gather around yeah. the stove. It's not, you're not actively yeah. looking at flames, are you? No, no. Ah, you can see the flames. Yeah, it would. Ah. Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Totally. Yeah. We have. I'm afraid we okay, rely Jim. on central heating. Anyway, yeah. all the best, yeah. Pat, and thanks bye, very much. Jim. Good talking to you Jim. again. Thanks, as, always, as always. As always.